Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Mamu today, commonly known as Mastodons, are a successful and widespread family of proboscideans. Originating in Africa during the late Oligocene, the group migrated into Eurasia in the early Miocene and had spread to North America by the end of the period. Up to six genera have been described and named, although many of these are sadly known from quite fragmentary remains. These animals generally resembled modern elephants, and were members of the clade Elephantimorpha, which contained most Miocene and Pliopliocene proboscideans, apart from the Dinotheres. However, the structure of mammuted teeth set them apart from modern elephants. Instead of possessing flat, grinding molars utilised for chewing abrasive vegetation such as grasses, mammuted had distinctive cone-shaped cusps on the teeth in a condition known as zigolophodonti. These striking molars were adapted for slicing and crushing branches, twigs and leaves, with their shape drawing comparisons to human chests, hence the name mastodon, which means breast tooth. Analysis of the fossil locales in which these animals lived has revealed that mastodons generally preferred forested or partially wooded environments and avoided open grasslands. They also differed from modern elephants in terms of their postcranial anatomy, having shorter legs, flatter skulls and longer bodies than their modern cousins. The earliest and most basal mastodons were rather modest in terms of size and possessed elongated lower jaws equipped with a pair of small tusks. Later forms were larger, sometimes considerably so, and had shorter lower jaws that sometimes lacked tusks. Interestingly, this same trend can also be observed in the gomphotheres, with the derived genera more closely resembling living elephants. It was traditionally thought that mammutids were the most basal elephantimorphs, although several recent studies from 2019 and 2020 have demonstrated that mastodons and gomphotheres appear to have been sister lineages. The latter were previously considered to be more derived and closer to elephantids. Although mammutids were never particularly diverse, they survived into the early Holocene, roughly 10,000 years ago in North America, and died out due to a combination of climate change and overexploitation by human hunters. The oldest and most basal mastodon so far described is the genus Lossodocodon from the late Oligocene of Kenya 27 to 24 million years ago. It was small compared to its later relatives, standing approximately 6 foot 4 inches tall at the shoulder and weighing up to 2 tons. The lower jaw was elongated and possessed a distinctive tall crowned molars typical of the family, while the trunk was relatively short. The tusks in the upper jaw were moderately curved and pointed downwards, which may have been utilised to break or pull down branches. Contemporary animals included primates, hyracoids, and large carnivorous hyenodonts, which would almost certainly have preyed on Lossodocodon. A closely related genus found in slightly younger deposits was Eozygodon, an animal that lived during the early Miocene and was also found only in Kenya. It is known from partial skull material, which includes a short mandibular tusks on the lower jaw and Toblerone-shaped molar teeth. The tusks present in the upper jaw were also relatively short and downturned, with the overall size of Eozygodon being just slightly smaller than the earlier Lossodocodon. During the early Miocene, Mammutids journeyed out of Africa and into Eurasia as the two land masses came into contact, with the oldest non-African genus being Zygolophodon. With up to six assigned species, this genus had a very wide geographic and temporal range, dwelling across Africa, Europe and Asia. Zygolophodon tapiroides and Zygolophodon turicensis are known from the early to middle Miocene of Europe, while Zygolophodon aegypticus is known from the early Miocene of Egypt, while Zygolophodon lufengensis, chingingensis and nemongensis have been found in Miocene deposits in East Asia. Recent finds have also come to light from Thailand, suggesting that the genus also inhabited Southeast Asia as well. Zygolophodon species are renowned for their greatly elongated, horizontal and slightly upward curving tusks, which are the longest of any proboscidean. Interestingly, a potential species, once known as Zygolophodon borsoni, that inhabited Eurasia from the later Miocene to the Middle Pleistocene, was among the most massive of all proboscideans. Standing approximately 4.1 metres, or 13.5 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighing in at 16 tonnes, this enormous animal rivalled Paraceratherium in terms of size. 
However, this animal is sometimes considered to be a species of the more derived genus Mammut instead. A North American genus that appears to have evolved from Zygolophodon was the genus Myomastodon meriami, that inhabited the open savannas that were common there during the Middle Miocene. The validity of this genus has been questioned over the years, but a recent 2020 paper by Shichi Wang et al. has suggested that Myomastodon was a genuinely separate animal with up to four species, three of which were native to Asia. If this turns out to be correct, then Myomastodon likely evolved from an East Asian species of Zygolophodon that then migrated into North America by the Middle Miocene. Another Asian mammutid was the genus Sinomammut, from the late Miocene of Gansu Province, China, approximately 12 to 11 million years ago. It was known from a single, fragmentary mandible found in the 1990s. However, most of the specimen has been lost, leaving only the right ramus and an in-situ photograph of the mandible. This was originally thought to belong to a gomphothere, but an analysis revealed it to actually be a mammutid that was a sister group to the well-known and famous genus Mammut. Speaking of which, the genus Mammut was a primarily North American animal that evolved from an East Asian common ancestor with Sinomammut. This was a highly successful and widespread genus, with fossil remains extending from Alaska to Honduras, inhabiting mostly forested environments. In terms of appearance, the American Mastodon was broadly similar to living elephants, but possessed a stockier build with shorter legs, a flatter skull and proportionally longer torso. The tusks were prominent and elongated, extending forward at lengths of up to 5 metres or 16 feet, and curved upwards towards the tips. The molars were typical of the family, with pointed crowns useful for crushing and processing vegetation gained from a mostly browsing lifestyle. Up to five species are known, although there has been some debate as to which of these are actually valid. The oldest species was Mammut Matthewi from the early Pliocene of Snake Creek Formation, Nebraska, roughly 5 million years ago, and Mammut Raki from similarly aged deposits of New Mexico. M. Matthewi has also been reported from a single site in China, although this may represent a specimen of Sinomammut instead. M. Raki, along with Matthewi, have at times been considered invalid due to a lack of distinguishing anatomical features. A late Pliocene species, Mammut cosoensis, was native to California, while the famous Mammut americanum was the youngest form, surviving until the very end of the Pleistocene and possibly into the early Holocene. The average body size of the species was around 2.3 metres or 7 foot 7 in height at the shoulders, while large males were up to 2.8 metres or 9 foot 2 inches in height. Among the largest male specimens, the 35-year-old AMNH9950 was 2.89 metres or 9.5 feet tall and weighed in the region of 7.8 tonnes, while another was 3.25 metres tall and weighed 11 tonnes. A close relative, Mammut Pacificus, was named in 2019 and inhabited what is now California and Idaho during the Pleistocene. Like modern elephants, the females were smaller than males and lived in herds. They had a low and long skull with long curved tusks, with those of the males being more massive and more strongly curved. Macedons had cusp-shaped teeth, very different from mammoth and elephant teeth, which have a series of enamel plates well suited for chewing leaves and branches of trees and shrubs. Macedons have been characterised as predominantly browsing animals. Of all American proboscideans, they appear to have been the most consistent in browsing rather than grazing, consuming C3 as opposed to C4 plants, and occupying closed forests versus more open habitats. This dietary inflexibility may have prevented them from invading South America during the Great American Interchange, due to the need to cross areas of grassland to do so. Most accounts of gut contents have identified coniferous twigs as a dominant element in their diet. Other accounts, such as with the burning tree Macedon specimen, have reported no coniferous content and suggest selective feeding on low herbaceous vegetation, implying a mixed browsing and grazing diet. Study of mastodon teeth microwear patterns indicates that these animals could adjust their diet according to the ecosystem, with regionally specific feeding patterns corresponding to boreal forests versus the cypress swamps present in Florida during the last glacial maximum. A 2020 study of mitochondrial DNA from American mastodon remains collected in eastern Beringia 
indicates they belong to two genetically divergent clades. The clades were dated to different interglacials, suggesting a repeated pattern of colonisation during an interglacial, followed by extinction during the subsequent glacial advance. The Beringian clades had less genetic diversity than populations present south of the ice sheets, suggesting they were founded by relatively small migrating populations. Mastodons are typically depicted with a thick, woolly mammoth-like coat of brown hair, but there is no preserved evidence for this. The genus tolerated a range of habitats and climates. Northernmost populations inhabited boreal forests, living alongside moose and beavers, while those of Florida and Mexico inhabited relatively balmy swamps and woodlands, sharing their environment with reptiles and amphibians. Without soft tissue mastodon fossils, we can't truly assess their cult adaptations. But Laramindi et al. noted that mammoth tails are long for those of proboscideans. This contrasts with the especially short tails of woolly mammoths, and might have implications for Macedon thermal dynamics. In other words, they weren't feeling the cold enough to shorten their tails. These details of ecology, biogeography and anatomy demonstrate how different mastodons and woolly mammoths really were, and caution against simply slapping shaggy mammoth coats onto their stockier cousins. In addition, mammoths and the genus Mammoth, despite sharing similar names, were distant relatives, with their lineages diverging during the Oligocene. It is of course very likely that mastodons living further north were generally hairier than their relatives that dwelt in Florida and Central America, especially observing how levels of body hair vary in living Asian elephants. Fossil remains suggest that American mastodons became extinct at the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary approximately 10,500 years ago. A combination of climate change and overexploitation by Paleo-Indian hunters was to blame for their demise. The end of the last glacial period and the altering of North American ecosystems that resulted from it would have placed Macedon populations under stress, reducing their range and numbers. In a 2012 paper by Thiel et al, Macedon stomach contents were analysed and it was determined that these animals were dependent on a varied diet that would have included conifers, broadleaf trees, shrubs and herbs. Climatic stresses at the end of the Pleistocene would have reduced plant diversity causing a degree of stress on Macedon populations. Human hunting would then have simply pushed them over the edge. If humans had never entered the Americas, then it is almost certain that Macedons could have survived into modern times, likely inhabiting the forested regions of the southeastern US and the Great Lakes region. Sadly, these magnificent animals are no longer with us, and we can only marvel at their fossil remains as a window into a recent lost world. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with a video on the Entelodonts. See you again soon. Cheerio.